when they came to demolish here. So I have to go back to square one. The president has directed me to begin the design of one of the, you know, spores linking to this coastal route, and that is the Sokoto to Badagri. Just in March, we actually pumped in a million point five million um, into the, the kiosks. What is so important about the Lagos Calabar Coastal Highway that it is priority? Anyone that is traveling from Sokoto to Lagos, we do it in about 10 hours. And traveling from Southeast to Abuja, we do it in a maximum of five hours. These are the benefits of the coastal road. Is the government paying compensation for demolition? We will do everything possible to pay a human face compensation. What future plans does the affected vendors have? It really affect us a lot. Really, really affect us because I lose about 30% of my salary. Could there be opportunities presented by this road project? They still have some form of business going on even with the Lagos Calabar Coastal Road. These are questions begging for answers. Six years of investment destroyed on the six hours. Those are the exact words of the CEO and founder of Landmark Group, Mr. Paul Onwanibe. Now on April 29, 2024, the federal government with uh, the Ministry of Works under the supervision of the Minister of Works himself, Mr. Dave Umahi, led the team to destroy what used to be Landmark Beach. Now Landmark Beach is a place of resorts. Their theme is live, work, play. Now this part of uh, the play part looks like it's being taken away from them. Now, if you can look behind me, this uh, uh, the remnants of what used to be where the vendors um, used to sell here. This place used to be um, a place where people come to relax, morning, afternoon, evening, have parties, just play. But uh, now, the federal government said, this is an encroachment to a project started by the Good Luck uh, Jonathan administration and this project is supposed to cost 15 trillion naira and what's the project the lagos calabar coastal road now the lagos calabar coastal road is of course supposed to take people from lagos to calabar uh, cross river state south south nigeria it is a massive project on today's show we will tell you all that concerns landmark beach um this demolition the controversy surrounding it. We also ask who owns the waters that this, this beach was seen. Who owns the waters? Who owns the land? Is it the government? What about compensation? We'll tell you all that on the show. So stick around to know and to learn. I am your host, Gimalo Angel. Hello, okay. In the wake of progress along the Lagos Calabar Coastal Road, communities are grappling with the bittersweet reality of development. Amidst the demolition of structures to make way for modern infrastructure, stories of resilience and hope emerge. The demolition exercise began at the Manichula Beach, Oniru Waterfront, on April 17, and it was a Saturday. Okay, so let's take um, a walk. This is the landmark beach. But do you know that it's not only the landmark beach that was um, demolished, also the Mami Chula beach, which was, by the way, opened February 2024. So uh, they were not even allowed to do like a complete three months before this happened. Now, like I said earlier, the federal government felt that this beach was in the right of way 
Now, I remember when we came here, and I think the, the ones that got up to this point, I, I wasn't just kidding. <laughs> uh, this is a place where people relax. Um, they, they just try and um, ease off Lagos Wahala. <laughs> Minister of Works David Omahi said compensation for owners of the affected structures had been adequately factored into the project and urged those affected to see the greater good of the project. He condemned former South East Governor and Labour Party presidential flag bearer Peter Obi for inciting the people. He also said there was no inhumanity meted to landmark owned by Paul Owanibe. You know, some people darken castle without knowledge. There is devil in details. When you bring judgment, when you condemn people, you bring judgment upon yourself. And that's what he has done. And I think he's inciting some of uh, the Southeast people that are not well informed. He's inciting them and he gets them into trouble and he doesn't go to fight for them. Wisdom is a defense. We know money is a defense. But wisdom gives life to those that practice it. And I want our people to have wisdom because I'm involved. And there is no humanity method to landmark. That matter should be buried because I was there. And so we fought everything possible. Even people donated their right of occupancy to save his two big infrastructure. And that issue show, you know, appreciation. But some people have taken on it alongside with him to play politics. You know, some people are already very bitter. Why should he be President Bolaji Bola Ahmed? Tinibu that is the one to develop this coastal road. Oh, it will be a lasting legacy for generations to come. That is just their own distance. So they look for an avenue to attack. But it's all about darkening council without knowledge. And I'm very happy that the president has directed me to begin the design of one of the, you know, spores linking to this coastal road. And that is the Sokoto to Badagri. Now in a chat with Landmark Group founder and chief executive officer Paul Onwanibe, he said collaboration between the public and private sectors will be paramount in navigating Nigeria's economic terrain. No, absolutely. Um, I, I like that. Um, gosh, you should be a government official, right? But um, I've always said in, in speaking engagements that one of the key strengths that any society has is when the government and the private sector have a handshake and they come together and they do something for the greater good, right? Because the government is that body that does things for the greater good. The private sector is that body that, that supplies the demand, right? When they come together, it's a powerful combination, but it needs to be a symbiotic relationship. It's not a master and slave relationship. Um, so once we get to the point at which there's a symbiotic relationship, then there's synergy and we'll see wonderful things happen. I've seen it in many countries. Now, real estate expert Benga Adigo is founder and chief executive officer Reba Perfecta Limited. He elaborates on how the road project is influencing property values and investment opportunities in the area. The Lagos Calabar Coastal Superhighway project is a very laudable initiative by the federal government. It is 700 kilometers stretch of road that would have an extensive value chain. Um, it's a fantastic project because we know that if you look at the developed world, um, they are developed because they have free movement of goods and services and people. So this road is going to bring about free movement of goods and services and people. It's going to bring about cultural integration, regional economic integration. It's going to develop the economy in many ways. So yes, it's going to affect all of that is going to come with a serious demand in housing. All of that will come with a serious demand in commercial property. All of them will come about, you know, with a serious demand in other kinds of goods and services. So that would mean that, yes, property value along the stretch of the road will continue to appreciate. So it's a good time for people to look for ways to keen along that um, extensive um, value chain. 
property around Lagos Island seem to be in high demand. In fact, they are actually on high demand. So do you see the market evolving in response to the road project? Like I mentioned before, we expect a lot of businesses to spring up, lots and lots of businesses to spring up. So um, businesses will be, holidays for example, the holiday industry is going to be big, goods and services will be moved between maybe from Lagos to Calabar or Delta or Ondo along that stretch. So there will be lots of demand for commercial um, property like um, offices, warehouses, storage facilities and all these other kinds of properties. And of course the people who work in all these businesses will want to live close to these businesses. So there will also be an upsurge in demand for housing. But um, a good thing developers and investors can look at is mass housing scheme. Because if this road comes into place and it goes, everything goes as planned, there's going to be a massive resettlement of people moving from the rural areas to the, to the urban areas. That road is going to increase the urbanization rates that we have in Nigeria right now, which is at about 50.5%. We can see it move to as high as 60%, just that singular stretch of road. Because Lagos, again, still remains the commercial nerve center of Nigeria. Lagos, again, some people have argued, is the single failure point of the country, which means if Lagos fails, maybe Nigeria has failed. So there's also that statistic that about five people are moving to Lagos to resettle every minute. So if you put all this together, Lagos, there will be more demand for housing so people can stretch and move further down instead of everybody concentrating at the center. Because that road is now there to convey people easily from wherever they are to the commercial nerve center. People will move down a bit along the stretch of the road where housing will be more affordable. So investors and developers can look again um, to play in commercial real estate and then of course mouse housing schemes. You're still watching space.com on LN247. We'll take a quick break for Econotes. Then after Econotes, we'll speak to some victims of this demolition. To have you back, we're still talking about Lagos Calabar Coastal Road, the landmark beach demolition. Now, Damilola Abidene used to work as a beach cleaning supervisor. She lost her job there and she's doing something else. I had this conversation with her. Okay, so I have um, a, a third party staff. She uh, was the head supervisor of cleaning the beach. I was particularly glad about cleaning the beach. That means Landmark Beach had um, sanitation in mind. Um, I'll leave Abidemi to it because she has a, a story. She has a story she has to tell us. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, so tell us your story. You used to be the supervisor here. What happened that day that they demolished the beach? My name is Damilola. I work here as supervisor, a cleaner supervisor. So before I started working in Landmark, it was not easy because there's no job out there. 
So Lama gave us they gave us job. So some of my friends are even asking me, can you can you do a cleaner? I said there's no problem. So I started working as a cleaner before before I get to supervise Okay. So I've been here going to three uh, three years now. So and I'm the first one of, of my family. My daddy we have lost him since. So my and my mom she she's sick. So I need to look for money for my siblings to go to school. So and when I started working in the landmark, like everything is every, everything was easy until this happened. When they came to demolish here. So I have to go back to square one. Imagine me that I was supervisor. Now I mean staff now. You are staff where? Outside the beach. Okay. And that's lower than a supervisor. Yeah. You're no longer a supervisor. So what your so how has this affected your family now? It really affects us a lot. Really, really affected us because I lose about thirty percent of my salary. How did you lose that? Like supervisor a salary is more than just clean. cleaner. So you were telling me about your family. How did it affect your family? Because I, my, I have four siblings. Okay. So I have to stop one of them for schooling. From schooling? Yes. For now, because I can't cope with four of them due to the salary and quality. Oh wow. <laughs> so right, right now, it's, it's just three of them that are going to school because that's what you can afford because of the slash in salary. So, do you plan to do something else? Uh, oh, no, I don't. What do you have to say to the government for doing this? Yes, to, we are pleading them to have mercy on us, to compensate landmark. Okay. To compensate so that so they when they compensate landmark, you can get something. From there, yes. yes. Is there anything else you want to say? I'm just praising the uh, government and presidents. President to appreciate to compensate my because it's not easy. Your family can bounce back, and you can even take your mommy to the hospital. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that's um, Miss Abidemi talking about how um, her job as a supervisor has been um, sort of jeopardized because she is not getting the amount of money she used to get now um a, a, a child has to step out that's what we're talking about out of school children in nigeria one child has been added to them because of the demolition she had to step down one of them for now she can take care of only three we'll be right back for more <laughs> Now, I also spoke to Eze Samuel. He is the operational manager, Sport Landmark. Can you describe what happened on the day your shop was demolished? Were you given any prior notice or warning about the demolition? And if so, how much notice were you given? Okay, so um, thank you for coming around. Uh, we got um, a notice as regards the demolition. And, uh, it was, of course, not planned. Nobody expected that. It came like a shock and um we we got we're, we're not sure of who and where and why this whole thing was we heard it, it's um the coastal road reason and then we also heard it's a co-atlantic thing we're not just too sure of, you know where this issue is coming from but um um as regards the notice it, i think it was just two weeks it was two weeks and before i knew it and they told me to come move all my items and we the demolition already has started and i'm like you know it, it wasn't it wasn't a good one because just in march we actually pumped in a million point five million um into the the kiosks just to renovate and all that we did lots of um changing signages and all that just to because the beach is one place that um, we make money from and then we, we actually create um a whole lot of um, um, um place of leisure for people people come in to to eat 
why they play with the water and you know the sand and other families come in and all that so but i don't know why um, um at that time you know when we, we made that re um, renovation that was when the whole demolition thing came we never expected that and it was a huge, huge shock, shock to me and to the business owners too um i don't know but uh, I, I feel a, a whole lot should have been done as regards that because these are people's businesses. I'm just speaking for myself, and I know there are lots of other businesses, close to 50 people, you know, who has invested in, you know, um, um, this business, who own businesses around here. So I, I don't know. I know every other person must have had um, issues too, as regards some um, the demolition and all that. But for me, it, it was a huge loss for me from my end. Um, I know lots of equipment that I lost, and um, as regards that demolition, um, the, 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 the the renovation that was done recently. And all so it's quite sad, but I mean, as they say, <clears throat> you can beat the government sometimes, and then uh, you know, it's it's it, they say it's it's something that will bring uh, uh, good good stuffs for the for the people. So we we'll, we we'll just keep our fingers crossed and then watch them build the road, and hopefully, um, work already has started. Work already has started. Um, we hope that you know at the completion of this, uh, we would have um, it's going to have a, a huge positive impacts to businesses around here for those of us that are still in landmark and also uh, uh, um, beyond. So how has the demolition affected your business operations and income and what steps have you taken since the demolition to cope with the loss? Okay so so it's 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 been a lot. I just left a meeting this morning and I, I could get lots of bash from my bosses and all that but um, it's quite understandable but any business person would want to, you know, always want to get profit, regardless of the situation that their business is faced up with. Um, um, it's been a huge downturn, a huge one, because um, for a business that was experiencing a, a massive, a massive turnover, you know, but all of a sudden it, it's actually, uh, um, um, it's like a, a 60 to 40 percent, you know, loss as we speak right now. I don't even know where to start from. Is it the staffing? Is it the, the, the turnover? It's it's really, really low. I had to recently cut down on my staffs. I know lots of people that have lost their jobs as regards this. First of all, I have different staffs for the um, for the beach um, uh, kiosks and also I have um, separate staff for the um, the main building, the main um, spore inside the inside landmark. Um, first of all, the guys on the beach had to go just the week the demolition happened. They had to go about Almost 10 of them had to go. So that was on the side. And now for the fact that the beach on its own has, you know, a huge impact on businesses in Landmark, um, um, it's been affected. The beach has been affected. And then the businesses has been affected as well because we don't have much food for coming to the system anymore. And that has actually cost us a whole lot. We, 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 we don't have people who come into the system, who come into um, um, SPO and all that to, to patronize. So it's been a problem and that has cost me to, um, of course, watch, keep my business fl um, flowing. And for me to keep that working, I need to cut down on staffs, cut down on this, cut down on a whole lot of things. So um, there as well, I'm beginning to cut down on staffs. It's, it's a huge thing. We need to cut down on staff, but we're trying everything we can do we're driving up sales gradually. Um, one, one effect currently is that people do not know that Landmark still exists. Um, so um, I, I appreciate the, the, the management of Landmark. They're trying everything within their power to, to keep up you know, that name that the, 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 the business is still on, it's still there. It's not the whole of Landmark that is gone. Um, so, um, and also the businesses in Landmark, we're trying everything possible within our power to reach out to customers, our own customers, to let them know that we are still here in Landmark and Landmark sales. I could, I could, I remember last week a, a, a friend of mine uh, reached out to me, are you guys still in Landmark? Can I order? I said, yes, we are still in Landmark. That's because you already had that mentality that, oh, Landmark is gone, Landmark Beach is gone. So if, if most people feel that the whole of Landmark is gone. So um, um, it's, it's a huge impact right now on us negatively, but we, we're sure that it won't last for too long. Uh, it's just for the moment, and then um, with time, we would actually pick up again, hopefully. And then, with the help of the management, like I said, Landmark, they're bringing in different um, um, events and programs, um, um, shows, and all of that in the system, and to help the businesses 
within the ecosystem. So, and we on our end too, we are not resting, we are not relenting. We are trying everything within our power to keep up and then, you know, you know, keep our customers coming, yes.